In this video, we'll be going over the best wild shapes for druids based purely on utility and not damage, since those were covered in my other two wild shape videos. Starting off at number 10, we have the cat. The cat is a CR 0 creature with almost no health and only about 1 damage on average if it lands its attack, so it's definitely not a creature you turn into for any kind of combat purpose. However, it is an excellent utility wild shape because it has 30 feet of climb speed, which is ironically faster than the spider's climb speed, which is only 20 speed while also being a CR 0 creature. They can move at an impressive 40 feet of regular movement speed, has a plus 4 to its stealth skill, and even has keen smell. So it has advantage for tracking things with its smell. Now what makes the cat really useful as a utility wild shape is the fact that you can turn into a cat in a city or some other populated place and just use it to scout and spy on people. Since by default, most people are not going to be worried about a cat listening in on their conversations. But if your DM does require a roll, it gets an extra plus four to its stealth. And with a climb speed, it can run away pretty easily too, by just climbing over a building or a wall. However, if you need a tiny creature to go unnoticed outside of the city, then the spider is a pretty solid choice as well. It only has a 20 foot climb speed, but it does have spider climb, which means it can climb on ceilings to completely avoid notice inside dungeons, while also having a plus four to its stealth like the cat. But if for some reason you're running an underwater campaign and need to sneak around, the CR0 octopus is probably the best at being a scout than any of the other CR0 small beasts, as it also has a plus four to its stealth and has the underwater camouflage trait, which gives it advantage on stealth checks underwater plus an ability Ink Cloud that allows it to get away easier. And if it does need to battle, it has an auto grapple on hit with its tentacle. Although you can't turn into the octopus until level four, and that's kind of the only reason it's not on the spawner's list over the cat. Because the cat is also useful inside dungeons, but really the cat, spider, and octopus are three of the best small creatures that are good, excellent scouting tools. And at number nine, we have the Deep Wrath. This is a somewhat exotic beast, so there's a chance you won't be able to turn into it in the game. But if you have the option of the Deep Wrath, it has the unique distinction of being able to actually cast a spell in the form of Dancing Lights. Dancing Lights is a cantrip which provides light, and it doesn't even provide bright light, only dim light, but it does allow you to illuminate up to four areas, and they can just be used in whatever it wants. Although in addition to having the neat little trick of being able to cast Dancing Light, it also coincidentally deals competitive damage at its CR 1 4th rating. So, if you want to turn into a utility creature that's basically a walking flashlight, which also deals good damage at its CR rating, the Deep Wrath is like the third best utility creature you can turn into that also does good damage. As there's two other ones higher on this list. And at number 8, we have the Giant Badger. The Giant Badger is a CR 1 4th creature, deals some of the most competitive consistent damage, as it's one of the only creatures at this low CR rating with a multi-attack, and it has the keen smell ability, which allows it to gain advantage on perception checks that rely on smell, which could be situationally useful just like with a cat who has the same trait. But the real reason the giant badger makes the utility list is because it has a 10 foot burrow speed. As long as the giant badger isn't on solid rock, or I guess anything other really hard, it can dig 10 feet underground and this can allow it to basically just avoid encounters or damage completely. If you're scouting out something in the woods and you get caught, you can just burrow underground and they can't really touch you unless they also have a burrow speed. And a burrow speed is not very common. Very few things have one, which means if you do have one, you have an excellent out to a lot of situations. Although it's only 10 feet of it, which means you can't use it very well in combat to pop out and attack and go in. It's more of a utility thing outside of combat that can also allow you to completely leave combat if you want. And the fact that it also has competitive damage on top of great utility is kind of a bonus. And at number seven, we have the Riding Horse. This is another CR 1 4th beast, which has a distinction where it has a 60 foot movement speed baseline. And as a large creature with a high strength score, meaning it can carry other people that want to ride on top of it. If you really need to run away from an encounter or to try to catch up to someone, you can't really turn into something faster than the Riding Horse at this CR level. There are faster beasts, but not until you get to the CR1 rating, where there's one beast called the Moorbounder that has a 70 foot move speed. And then of course, a lot of the flying creatures have a faster movement speed as well, but you can't turn into those until level eight. And high movement speed is very useful for maneuvering around a battlefield as well. 
You could use it to run in and grab someone who's down and just pull them out of the fight to safety. Or just dash and have 120 feet movement speed for that turn to get wherever you want faster than anyone else possibly could. There's even an upgraded version of it when you can transform into stronger beasts, as the Warhorse at the CR 1 half rating also has 60 foot of movement speed baseline, and just has more health and damage. Having a high movement speed comes in handy pretty often, and turning into a horse is going to be one of the fastest ways to get around until you can turn into a flying creature at level 8. And at number 6, we have the Giant Riding Lizard. This is another CR 1 4th creature, which has a 30 foot climb speed, has the spider climb trait, so it can climb on ceilings without a problem, and also is a large creature with a high strength score, meaning other people can ride the giant lizard in order to climb over walls or on ceilings. If you want a utility wild shape that allows you to carry other people over a wall or a large crevasse, then the giant riding lizard is one of the best ones you can turn into until you get to the flying creatures as you can turn into it immediately at level 2 when you learn Wild Shape. And while it might not be as fast as the horses, it does have one other thing about it that makes it kind of good. Might even just be a little bit of an oversight, but the Giant Riding Lizard has one of the highest health point values at the CR rating as well, with an average health of 19. There's only one other creature that beats it out, and that's the Giant Bat, but you can't turn into the Giant Bat until level 8. So it's basically tied for having the highest amount of health at its CR rating that you can turn into. So it's a decent creature turn if you just want to survive something. The giant riding lizard is ironically more tanky than the boar, another beast at the same CR rating whose whole utility is being hard to kill with its relentless trait. Relentless is an ability that allows the giant boar to survive a blow which would otherwise bring it below zero hit points, as long as the damage is seven or less but the giant boar only has 11 health on average, which means the giant boar can survive basically 18 points of damage maximum, and the giant riding lizard has 19 health baseline, which means if you wanted to turn into something to survive, the giant lizard is one of the best options to turn into, while also being an excellent utility creature with its ability to carry people over walls. Although its high HP might just be an oversight, it's kind of an exotic creature like the deep wrath, as it comes from the out of the abyss module, and generally, module-specific creatures are a little bit stronger than other creatures of their CR rating. And at number 5, we have the Giant Centipede. The Giant Centipede is a CR 1 4th creature, like basically half the creatures on this list, and has this really negative side effect of having the least amount of health out of all the beasts at the CR rating, with only 4 on average. However, despite its really low health, it has one really good thing about it which allows it to make a utility best of list. And that's its 30 feet of blind sight. Blind sight basically allows you to see invisible creatures. So if you're fighting an invisible enemy at low levels or at even higher levels, the giant centipede can allow you to see it as long as you're within 30 feet. And remember, blind sight doesn't make you blind past its blind sight radius unless it specifically says so, which means it also just has normal sight past 30 feet. So there's no real negative to just having a really high amount of blind sight. And it's one of the few creatures you can turn into at the CR 1 4th rating that has blind sight, as not being able to see an invisible creature could be kind of deadly at low levels. However, it also has 30 feet of climb speed, which is always useful. It's not strong enough to carry people like the giant riding lizard, but it can at least climb over walls on its own. And it has competitive damage, as its bite ability rivals the best damage dealers at the CR rating. But all the other ones who also deal the same amount of damage have to use a charge in order to do so, whereas the giant centipede just needs the target to fail a constitution saving throw. So it's a lot easier to get its maximum damage every turn than to try to position for a charge. So it's on this list for having its utility of having blind sight because that's really good, but also it's one of the highest damage dealers at the CR rating, but is kind of made of glass and dies to pretty much anything as it only has 4 health. Although if you want better blind sight and you're a higher level, the giant bat has 60 feet of blind sight, and is definitely one of the best beasts to turn into if all you want is blind sight, since it also has that fly speed. Although, since it has a fly speed, you can't turn into the giant bat until level 8, and the giant bat is kind of really lackluster for that high level, so you would purely only turn into the giant bat if all you needed was blind sight, because its damage and health are kind of bad in tier 2 and 3 levels of play. Although in tier 1 levels of play, you know, 1 to level 4, the Giant Centipede is more than good enough for providing you a blindsight creature. And at number 4, we have the Giant Constrictor Snake. 
This is a CR2 creature, which means normal druids can't actually turn into it at all, but Circle of the Moon druids gain the ability to transform into it at level 6, which is also when they'd already have the ability to turn into creatures that have a swim speed, which the giant constrictor snake has. And in addition to the snake having the second highest health at the CR rating, it has the Constrict attack, which if it lands, automatically grapples and treats the target as restrained. And the restrained condition is really good. Basically, the creature can't move and all attacks against the creature have advantage. And all of the creature's attacks have disadvantage. And they also have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. So if you have a high priority target, it is really good to get the restrained condition on them so that everyone has advantage on their attack rolls. And the giant constrictor snake can basically spam attempt the restrained condition, which is usually a pretty tough condition to actually inflict on someone. And even after it has someone constricted, it still has a bite attack they can use on other creatures, which has a 10 foot reach. The giant constrictor snake is also huge, taking up nine squares, which means this thing can zone like a beast and force the enemy creatures to have to maneuver around your giant snake if you place it in a key location. And its large hitbox means it can gain opportunity attacks a lot easier. And you can absolutely use its constrict ability as an opportunity attack in order to stop a creature from moving any further. However, if you're not playing a moon druid and you really want to play a swimming creature that can also restrain, then the giant frog is an excellent choice. It's only a CR 1 4th creature, which means it's a CR rating lower than what you can turn into when you gain the ability to turn into swimming creatures. But its bite attack works just like the giant constrictor snakes constrict, in that if it lands it auto grapples and restrains the target. So if you want a creature that can spam the restrain condition, the giant frog is also an excellent choice to go into, even if it will have slightly less health than other creatures that you might be able to turn into at level 4. Although once you can turn into a CR 1 creature at level 8, then you gain access to the upgraded giant toad, who can do the same thing, grapple and restrain if it lands its bite attack. And both of them have the ability to basically instantly kill a creature if they swallow it afterward, while also having the standing leap ability. It's just, the giant toad and giant frog are kind of at awkward CR ratings. If the giant frog was just one level higher in its CR rating, it would be the best creature to turn into at level 4 when you gain access to swimming creatures. If it didn't have a swim speed, it would be one of the best creatures to turn into at level 2 when you first gain wild shapes. But with the giant toad, you can actually turn into it in a moon druid at level 4, so it's one of the best utility restrained creatures you can turn into until they gain access to the giant constrictor snake at level 6. And at number 3, we have the stench cow. This creature ended up taking the number 1 spot in my top 10 wild shapes video, and that was because the creature, at the CR 1 4th rating, has a distinction where it's tied for having the most amount of damage at the CR rating, with the giant centipede and the deep wrath, but also has damage resistances. Common ones too, the stench cow has resistance to cold, fire, and poison damage, three of the most common types of damage you can run into, which makes it some of the best resistances you can get, as remember, resistances cuts those damage types in half. So, taking half damage from fire and poison makes it an excellent utility creature. It also, of course, has competitive damage, standard stats for its CR rating, it's not made of paper like the giant centipede, and even has an additional feature called stench, which has a chance to poison creatures that attack it within 5 feet. Now, the only reason I don't have the stench count number 1 is because the top two spots have restrained condition abilities, and it's really good to impose the restrained condition on other creatures at all tiers of play, as the stench count stops being useful once you hit level 4 and is never really useful for moon druids who can just turn into one of the higher spots as well. And at number 2 we have the crocodile. Just the normal standard crocodile which is a CR 1 half creature. The crocodile has a bite attack which if it lands allows you to auto grapple the target and treat the target as restrained. So just like the giant frog. However the crocodile is at the sweet spot of CR rating as you can't turn into an aquatic creature until you're level 4 and at level 4 you gain the ability to turn into CR 1 half creatures, which makes the crocodile one of the best creatures to turn into at that CR rating because it can impose the restrained condition with its bite. And that's about it, the restrained condition is just that good, mainly because of its usefulness across all tiers of play. Restrained is good at tier 1 and tier 4, although you'd be hard pressed to land its bite attack in tier 4 levels of play, as it only has a plus 4 to its attack modifier, but that's besides the point. And we've already gone over what you can turn into if you're a moon druid hitting level 4, although since every other druid can't turn into the giant constrictor snake, I'm putting the crocodile higher because it's what non-moon druids can turn into at level 4 that's really good. 
And at number one, we have the giant spider. This is a CR1 creature, which means moon druids can turn into it at level two. And other druids can turn into it at level eight when they gain the ability to turn into CR1 creatures. And it's useful for both of those tiers, as the giant spider has an ability called web, which on a recharge of five to six, you can perform a ranged weapon attack. And if you land the attack, the creature is restrained by webbing, which they can attempt to break on their turn by wasting their action or having someone else destroy it. But the important part is that you could impose a restrained condition at range. And remember, recharge means at the start of your turn, you can roll a six sided die. And if the result is five or six, the ability recharges and can be used again. So you have the option to use web basically every round if you're lucky, but you're guaranteed to have it for pretty much every single combat. And being able to have a ranged restrained condition is super good, as I've already talked about the restrained condition a lot in the previous few spots. There are very few beasts you can turn into that even have a ranged attack. And the giant spider has a ranged restrained condition applier, which would make it really high in this list by that alone. But that's not all. It also deals competitive damage for its CR rating, so you won't be losing out in that. It has the maximum armor class at its CR rating and decent health, so it's not super weak like the giant centipede. And of course has a climb speed of 30 feet and the spider climb trait so it can walk on ceilings. And it has a plus seven to its stealth score, which means it's one of the highest boosts you can get from your stealth score from a beast. This thing is a stealth machine, especially since you can use it to climb around ceilings and then maybe web someone. But there's one other thing that kind of pushes it to the top of this list on top of all of its already good utility. And that's its 10 feet of blind sight. On top of all the other good things about the giant spider, it also has the really important blind sight sense. While it's not as useful as the giant bat's 60 feet of blind sight, being able to have any blind sight at all is a huge benefit. And it has this benefit on top of all the other benefits it has, which just kind of makes the giant spider a utility machine. It's an excellent scouting tool. It's great for navigating dungeons and traps. It has competitive damage. It has good defensive stats. And of course, it has the really good web ability to impose a restrained condition at range. If you're a moon druid who can turn into this thing at level two, this is definitely one of the best utility creatures you can turn into. If you're a normal druid and can turn into a level eight, it's also one of the best utility creatures you can turn into, which is why it takes number one spot on this list. All right, and that's the list. I think I've covered pretty much all bases when it comes to wild shapes now, since I have a video on the best wild shapes for normal and moon druids. But if you have another interesting idea, I'm all up for suggestions. Also, if you like the video, make sure you watch all the other ones in the playlist and subscribe for future updates.